Welcome back to Our Issues Milwaukee. I'm your host, Andrea Williams. Our focus this morning will continue on STEM education. Science, technology, engineering, and mathematics education puts an emphasis on preparing future generations to be successful in their careers. It teaches children more than science and mathematics concepts. It also focuses on hands-on learning with real-world applications that will help develop a variety of skill sets, including creativity and 21st century skills. My next guest is Liz Taylor. She serves as the director of STEM at the Milwaukee School of Engineering. How are you, Liz? Doing great. How are you, Andrea? I'm doing well. Appreciate you being here. And I'm excited to discuss the importance of STEM education with you today because the ability to think critically and challenge standards is the basis of innovation. And that is a matter of fact from the Equality of Opportunity Project. They say innovation is a critical component of economic growth and that innovative thinkers are the movers and shakers that have the potential to change the world. That's a mouthful <laughs> and it's true. So tell us more about the STEM programming that you offer for young people K through 12 there at MSOE. Yeah, we have a variety of programs that we're unique and we really are K through 12. We start with the little kindergartners mm -hmm. all the way through seniors in high school. And MSOE has this duality programming model. So a lot of our programs will take place on our campus. They might manifest themselves in that traditional after school or weekend space. But then we've also created two really innovative programs, our first ambassadors program and STEM on site programs, which allow us to bring our staff members, our students out into the community to the school so mm -hmm. they can work with students right where they're at. That is awesome. And we'll talk a little bit more in detail about those. So uh, you really do have a commitment to engaging with the community. So most of the time, when people think of universities, mm -hmm. they never really uh, put two and two together that the university is working with young people on a daily basis. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, we see all students, of course, as potential students, but I think anyone in the city knows we have this dire need for more technical talent. Mm -hmm. And so, of course, we'd love those students to come to MSOE, but uh, we really want to play a part in the community in developing that talent yeah. and helping students find what they might be passionate about here in Milwaukee. Absolutely, and MSOE refers to itself as a small university dedicated to achieving big things. So <laughs> <laughs> how do you go about, obviously you have to take different approaches when you're talking about a child that's in K four or five mm -hmm. versus a high schooler. How do you go about uh, approaching uh, STEM programming with young people at different levels? Yeah, the most important part is recognizing we have a lot of diversity in education in the city. A fifth grader or a second grader at one school might look completely different from a student at another. So a lot mm -hmm. of our programs are built upon a basis of if somebody knows nothing, they'll be totally fine. We can help them learn the engineering design process, just those basic critical thinking skills, and then give them a problem to solve. Um, with the older students or students who might have more experience, we might take away a little bit of the training wheels, as it were, <laughs> and give them the problem right off the bat and encourage them to use their own skill sets to solve it. Um, that's everything from creating their own operation board and then programming it to thinking on a bigger page and coding their own solutions to mm -hmm. different problems through our Girls Who Code Club. I love that. And <laughs> speaking of coding, uh, last segment we were talking to two young men who basically created an app that's going to be used quite a bit by individuals right here in the city of Milwaukee. Oh. And what I found interesting is that neither one of them really uh, had a background in dealing with uh, you know, creating apps, but it really is where the future's going. So what do you find uh, young people uh, really interested in when they come to the university? The unifying thread is problem solving, and, and some students don't realize that it is problem solving. They'll think of something that maybe in their daily life is really irritating or something they see and being able to help them understand that they can solve that problem, mm -hmm. whether it is through coding, technology, or just having this inquisitive mindset, uh, talking about innovation and entrepreneurship, you know, the different attack, um, attacks that they could take mm -hmm. on that. So we try to, in a lot of our programs, encourage students to think about the application of what we might be teaching them outside of their classroom or outside of their community organization we're serving them in. Yeah. Awesome. And when you really look at the number of students that you served <laughs> over the years, nearly 10,000 students and probably what, 150 schools. Mm -hmm. And what's really cool about that is you're not just focusing on the public school system or charter, you go across the board.
board, even <laughs> homeschool groups. Yeah. So uh, how would one uh, get involved with all the things that you have going on? Yeah, our best program to kind of get that gateway into working with MSOE is STEM on Site. So STEM on Site is a program where groups can bring students to us, we can bring our staff and materials to their school or organization mm -hmm. and we'll run a one to two hour hands-on activity. Uh, we typically work pretty closely with the educator or whoever the coordinator is, whether it's a homeschool parent who got tasked mm -hmm. with STEM for the day or a district-wide mm -hmm. coordinator to figure out what activities are most appropriate. Um, as I mentioned, we do K through 12, some of our activities might be be really good fits for a high school student in one district and might be a perfect fit for a middle school student in another so there's a lot of one-on-one -on -one discussion and coaching that goes on and that usually can be a springboard for further programming opportunities. Yeah, and that's awesome and you don't just stick to schools there are opportunities for nonprofits to get involved like the Boys and Girls Club of Greater Milwaukee and yeah. um, I think it's the um, United Community Center, mm -hmm. different organizations like that also can take advantage of the programming you offer. Yeah, and we found a lot of groups will start with that STEM on site program and then we'll springboard into First Ambassadors, our first robotics program. So the Boys and Girls Club is a perfect example. I think we work with five or six clubs to help them run their robotics mm -hmm. teams. Um, and a lot of that started with a one-on-one -on -one STEM discussion. Wow, robotics. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Sounds way over my head just <laughs> hearing it. But what are some of the things that go along when you talk about robotics? robotics and coding and things of that nature. Yeah, with robotics specifically, we're really excited to be a strong partner of FIRST Robotics, which is a K through 12 program that has all these different levels students can do. And we're the state affiliate at the FIRST Tech Challenge level, which we just hosted our state championship last Saturday and awesome. had about 500 people <laughs> cheering for kids uh, doing different challenges with robots. Um, but FIRST we really love partnering with because they focus not only on the technical aspects, but they really focus that students can go pro mm -hmm. in FIRST. It's the one sport activity that every student has that opportunity so helping them if they want to be a mechatronics mechanical drivetrain person they can focus on that they can try programming they could be a business leader they it's just try out everything they'd like in this cooperative environment um, so we found it, it aligns really well with that hands-on project-based approach at MSOE that we appreciate and that so many groups are trying to move students towards when we talk about STEM. Wow, it's just, it's really, it's amazing because I think when we were growing, well, you're much younger than I am, but <laughs> when I was growing up, you know, it was like, uh, we never even thought about any of the things that exist today, the yeah. internet, and if you look at the first video games versus the ones that our, you know, kids are playing yeah. today, it's like night and day, it really <laughs> is, so, and I'm really giving away my age, but uh, I, what I wanted to do is take a moment to talk about about individuals who are able to inspire young people mm -hmm. because uh, Katherine Johnson, who is one of the women who was featured in the movie Hidden Figures, uh, she recently passed away. She was one yeah. of the last ladies that was featured in that film that uh, was able to be here to really bask in being recognized for so many years. People never knew their names or all the achievements that they had. Mm -hmm. She was 101 years old, which is amazing, <laughs> but I uh, just wanted to emphasize the fact that she made the calculations that helped put men on the moon in 1969, a pioneering legacy, no doubt, along with the late mathematician Dorothy Vaughn and engineer Mary Jackson, and together they did help alter the country's history. And you never know when young people are walking through those doors if you have uh, the next young man or young woman who's going to help alter the country's history. Yeah, absolutely. And one of our big mindsets is we know not every student's interested in STEM, but we really want our programs to enable them to make that decision mm -hmm. for themselves. That's so much more than a math test or a science test. If they're excited about problem solving, chances are they still have a really bright future ahead and we'd like them to explore that on their own and, and be able to make that decision outside of a grade they might get in a classroom. Absolutely, because you really have a way of creating hands-on experiences and making it fun in a yeah. lot of ways. So <laughs> the same way it's presented in a classroom may not be the same way it's yeah. presented, you know, when they come and visit or mm -hmm. uh, get, get a chance to talk to some of your leaders there at MSOE. So before we run out of time, yeah. uh, with a lot of the programming that you offer, you do offer scholarships or maybe those parents who have a budget and they're not able to go, you know, beyond what they already do mm -hmm. or whatever the case may be. So give us the details on how to go about applying. 
Yeah, so for our summer programs that are open right now, uh, Catalyst for Future Success is our most popular middle school one, and applications for that are open now and close April 3rd. That one has a very structured scholarship process because mm -hmm. it's a, a much larger scholarship amount. Um, but for all of our programs, there are always scholarship opportunities available. So if somebody wants to attend a program and maybe doesn't see a, a very clear-cut scholarship opportunity, we always encourage them to email us. That way we can make sure that they get that opportunity. Okay, and your email address? It'd be stem at msoe.edu. Okay, we'll put that right there on the screen. And uh, again, I'll emphasize that the scholarship applications uh, have a deadline of April 3rd. Mm -hmm. And you guys have elementary school programs, programs for Girl Scouts, Boy Scouts, you just yeah. mentioned summer programs. Really long list of a lot of awesome things going on. Yeah. They can go to your website to find out more and kind of uh, maybe view and figure out with their child what they would be interested in. Absolutely, and if there's ever any question, they can shoot us an email and we'd be more than happy to find the right program for their students. Sounds good to me. Since 1903, MSOE has been creating Tomorrow's Leaders and you guys are really uh, getting them young <laughs> and making sure that our, our futures are secure. Absolutely. <laughs> thank you yeah. so much you for, for coming me. by. It's been a pleasure. Yeah, thank you. Liz Taylor is the Director of STEM at the Milwaukee School of Engineering. For more information on anything we've discussed, you can visit their website at msoe.edu or call 1-800-332-6763. That's going to do it for today's show. I'm your host, Andrea Williams. As always, thank you for watching, and I do hope you join us again next week as we take another look at Our Issues Milwaukee. Have a great day.